In Parsha Korach, we learn how to tap into self-esteem. We see Korach, who is a man, he had it all. He had fame, he had fortune, he had an incredible family, he had a very high position, and yet Korach was very unhappy. Why? Because he kept looking at Moshe and Aaron, and he said, I what would they have? I want to be who they are, instead of wanting to be who he was. Instead of tapping into all the bracha blessings that Hashem gave him, that God gave him, he was always tapping into wanting somebody else's. Number one key to having self-esteem is that you just tap into yourself. No comparing, no looking, no judging based on anybody else or anything else. You're just tapping into yourself. I have to build self-esteem by looking at myself. What are the things that God gave me? What are the things that is my inherent true beauty? And this is, this is myself. Now, there's something else that we can tap into this week's Parsha. When Korach came to Moshe and Aaron, he said, it's not fair. And, um, and why, should you be the lead, why should you be the high priest? And why should you be the, the leader? And what about me? And what about everybody else? And we all have roles. So in a certain way, he was right. Every single person has a role and every single person has a mission, but we all have different missions and different roles. That's the part where he, he didn't understand. And Korach, it says, was swallowed by the earth. The earth actually swallowed him up. He fell down into the earth as a punishment for challenging Moshe and Aaron. Now, what was the challenge he was making? He was saying that you guys are doing this for yourselves. You're not doing this because Hashem wants you. God wants you to be who you in your role, in your leadership roles. It's because you yourself want to take everything. When Moshe and Aaron heard this, they couldn't believe it. They fell on their faces. They're like, every single thing that we have done is for the people. And every single thing we've done is api Hashem, is according to God's mouth, God's will. We don't do anything for ourselves on our own volition. Leadership and privileges also come with a lot of responsibilities. And a person is looking just at the privileges and not looking at the responsibilities, they missed it. They say, we not only, okay, we, are, we do have privileges, but we've taken on so much responsibilities and all that we've taken on is only because God wants us to. Now, there had to be some kind of like proof evidence for this. What was the proof evidence? God said, okay, Aaron, gather all the staffs of every single tribe, the leader, take their staff. And you also have your staff. And the staff which will have a flower that blossoms an almond flower of a bud, a blossomy, and then produces an almond, we're gonna know that this is gonna be the person who's chosen by God to be the high priest. So Aaron's staff of wood miraculously has this bud and flower and blossoms into an almond. The question is asked, why does it have to go through this process? Why couldn't God just say, all of a sudden, the staff will become an almond or something like this? Like, why can't it just be something as a proof of evidence that, you know what, Aaron is the leader, is God chosen. Why does it have to be a process? So we have an incredible lesson in this, which is what? Life is a process. And in that process is God. That means if I see somebody and I see where they got to, how they got to, I see that somebody has a job and I'm like, oh, I wish I had that job. Or I see that somebody has a certain person in their life that I wish I also had a person like that in life. I'm judging Betty said, no, I want to look at the other person's family members and I want them to be my family members or I don't know. The life of the other person. I'm not understanding that the process, how they got to, it's not just that they got to because they had luck or they got to it because, you know, um, they had a certain protection, a protexia, as you say in Hebrew, right? That they knew somebody, they were able to network. No, the process in itself of getting there was also according to God. Not only can I not have that outcome of the other person because it doesn't belong to me, and by wanting that, I'm actually not tapping into my own sense of self, but even the process of how they got there is a godly process. And I also have to look inside myself and know that my processes in my life are also godly processes. I didn't just get something because I got it. I got it because all along the way, God was in that process of getting it. All along the way, God is in every single one of our natural processes. And he's also, of course, in every single one of the results that happen in those processes, as a result of those processes. Shabbat Shalom.